All this right, we conference just started. will now be recorded. Okay, we just started recording. Uh, you guys didn't miss anything. Anyone listening to the recording late, you couldn't get down anyway. Um, these games will be over. We went over 143.5, Richmond and Vatek. And then we also went over in South Florida as well. And we have a lot of action, a lot of uh, March Madness stuff to talk about. Won't be here too long. We'll go over results as well as we are negative for the year. Tell you when I win, tell you when I lose. Let's get those out. And based on the time, we may uh, have to start firing games to a little sooner than I expected. Let's get that USF out to subscribers too. See the process? It takes a little while. It takes a little while for me to do this. South Florida, Central Florida, over 143, over 143. All right, now we could breathe for a second. They were coming in just as I was uh, <clears throat> ready to log in. And Johnny said, he texted me and said, hey, are you okay? Are you okay? I said, yeah, I just in the middle of stuff coming in and organizing with who's going to fire. So uh, let me just send that out and then we'll pretend we're starting over with two premium plays sent out. Anybody is in town in, for March Madness, it will be pretty wild here. I recommend you guys get through the sports books, get your plays in early. Don't wait till Thursday last second. The lines will be long. If you're out and about, I will probably be downtown most of the time, probably around Circa, Westgate. If I'm up around uh, the Strip, I'll probably be swing by the Westgate, but I'll probably go downtown for Circa as well. It should be really uh, a lot of opportunity down there to find some good action some good because they're, they do a good job of attracting so much public money. We'll have a good shot of finding some uh, shaded numbers and they take the limit from anybody, which uh, you got to respect that. One of the few books that'll do that. All right. Those two flats are in the book. Let me just write down one, give me two more seconds, guys, so we get this shit out of the way. And then we are good to go. If I don't know if this one started, it was it was baseball, college baseball. I didn't bet it. I moved it earlier um, for a group. It's uh, under 13 and a half, minus 120. I'd even go under 14, because worst you could do is push if they win. So I'd go under 14, I doubt it's, I mean, under a 13, sorry, under 13, they went under 13 and a half minus 120. I'd go under 13 minus 120, 25. Um, they tend to do really well on those long-term. And again, if they hit, the worst you're gonna do is push. I know it's a lot of uh, you guys following me do not have access to college baseball. So unless it's like uh, the World Series, late in the college world series where they're readily available i won't be putting them out as premiums because they're going to help my results obviously because they they win they do very well long term but if they help my results but you guys aren't making money off it it does me no good i mean it does me good it doesn't you any good so we don't play that here all right we're gonna have some more action let me just see what time these games go off make sure we're good to go Okay, let's 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 look at this one real quick first. Hold on, give me a second here. We got another play possibly. Bet number, give me bet number. I told you this is March Madness. This is March Madness. All right, you ready? Three percent play. Three percent play. Game six seventy. Howard Wagner. Howard Wagner. 
We're going to go under 128, under 128. There are 128 and a halfs out there. Hopefully you are hunting for the best number. But uh, we're, we're willing to take under 128, another 3% play. So that's three premium plays so far, all in college basketball. This is Wagner versus Howard. Three percent. This is NIT tournament action, I believe. NIT, CBI, CTI, whatever that nonsense is for the teams that don't make the big dance. You guys know what it is. All right, and get your questions in. So far, I have not looked at a single question because we are firing. But make sure you guys get those in. This is an open house, so this is as packed as we get. And with uh, March Madness coming, we have a filled room. So I'm going to try to get to as many questions as possible. But I won't keep you here all night. I got shit to do too. But more importantly, uh, we got to prepare for the madness. I will go over quickly what my thoughts are as far as brackets go. Um, again, I don't make my money with that stuff. So I get it. It's for fans and entertainment. And I, I, everyone, anyone doing that should do it. God bless you. Have fun with it. I just don't have that much time. Um, so unfortunately, I don't get into any of those bracket contests. So I don't put much work into the brackets these days. All right. So did we, all right. All uh, right, we got 10 minutes before we look at those seven o'clock games. So let me, let's go back. Let's rewind a little bit. And uh, more importantly, let me give you guys some bonuses. And all, oh, wow, we're packed. Welcome, 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 welcome. Everybody's in the house. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, yeah, the Blackjack Talks there, man. We're doing it. We're doing it. We were played. Uh, actually, we I was at Red Rock, stayed at Red Rock for uh, three days. Two, not yet, yeah, three days, yeah. And uh, was able to play. We actually won. My girl played is how it's been going. Um, she actually, we went to Red Rock about a week and a half ago, or the last time she was here, probably like two weeks ago, went to Red Rock and just gambled. Um, just went up there for dinner, actually. Uh, they made it night. They put a bunch of new restaurants in there. Wanted to go to Durango, but Durango was a little bit too far. So let's go to Red Rock. Went to Red Rock, make a long story short. We went to the high limit. She played some blackjack. And, um, and then I reached out to a host because she played high limit in the high limit. And I know those villas, if you could ever, if you ever stay at the hard rock, at the Red Rock, you ever get a chance to stay in those villas or the penthouses are next level. But even the villas, they're absolutely amazing. Like they come with a but It's just, it's, it's worth it. Like if, if you gamble and get comps, that's where you want to get rooms. If you, or gambling if your average hand is that limit anyway so because she was playing high limit i reached out to the host and i said hey um she's coming back in staying for a week we wanted to have a staycation can you hook something up with those villas and it took a shot and he said well i said we could deposit cash in in the uh in the cage also give them an idea we're, we're willing to play and uh oh also what was her was the girl's name I forget that we from Florida. What's I please? I'm so terrible. Mandy, Mandy, was it Mandy? Was it Mandy? And I remember I was having trouble with the the laptop was dying, and I didn't write down the number you gave me about going to coming to Mississippi or, or to Texas, to Texas, to us coming to Texas to play blackjack. So please, 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 if you're in this chat, there's so many people. I just I can't even see all the names. But if you're here, Mandy, uh, make sure you uh, pass that along again. Me and my girl would love to come out there and uh, do a little advantage play with you if uh, you say there's action there. Uh, but getting back to that, so uh, she said, listen, I, we're packed because of March Madness. I don't have any villas or anything better available, but I could get you a really nice suite um, comp. So for uh, three days or something like that. So we did that and played blackjack. And now she's got it down. First it was like, I just, just would, where if I'm holding this in right hand or left hand, whether you hit, stay, 
ruffling chips, how much to bet, you know, all that kind of stuff. And uh, anyway, she uh, won a little bit during that stay and hopefully increased the rating so we could get back there. But yeah, it's wide open here. If any of you guys are interested in that advantage play, make sure you uh, look into those books I shared last time. It'll, it'll at least help you set down a foundation for sure. Now, with that out of the way, let me get some bonuses out there for you guys. <clears throat> You're going to get 100 bucks off or 25% all the all access. All you got to do is Steam 100 or Steam 25. Steam 100 gets you 100 bucks off. Steam 25 gets you 25% off. If you want to run with anyone during March Madness, you probably are going to want to know what these betting syndicates are on, especially since they haven't been crushing it during regular season. And I already see from bets coming in um, and bet sizes, they're looking to do some damage uh, during the madness. Now, before we go forward, I always go backwards. Transparency is first and foremost. The reason I'm number one at Wager Talk since the site started is because I follow the exact same system over over and over again rinse repeat rinse repeat rinse repeat i don't promote hot streaks because they become irrelevant if anything you should be fading hot streaks you shouldn't be jumping on hot streaks because hot streaks are unsustainable think about what you're doing when you buy somebody that's won nine straight games you're actually expecting probability to be defied again how, all, how many times can that happen? Like nobody's going 100%. I'm sorry to break that to you. No one's going 70% for more than a week, two weeks. That's not sustainable. But casual bettors do the opposite. They see someone's 10 and one and they go and buy instead of thinking that, how's he going to sustain that? What's it going to go 90 plus percent forever? It's just not possible. With that, that, that particular cappers, who's going to defy probability? It just doesn't make sense. But that's our, that's our emotional brain. And that's how sales works. It's not just this industry. It's all industries. It's attacking your emotional brain. That's why we have buyer's remorse. Because what happens is our reasonable brain kicks in. Most things are aimed towards our emotional brain. Because on their emotion, we make the worst decisions. Good and bad emotion. Like whether you're too happy or too angry, too sad, all those are the worst situations to possibly make any type of important decisions under emotion. And again, that's what hot streaks are aimed to do. Make you emotional. Get you to feel FOMO, fear of missing out. I miss this guy's 10 and 1. I don't want to miss the next 10 and 1. But if you take a step back, what you're going to determine is, is this guy really going to go 20 and two? Where's the last two years? Where's the last five years? Where's this 20 and two coming from? So again, we keep it real because the only reason we're doing this is for profit. If you need action, if you need to win this week, win this month, pay your mortgage, are behind in whatever payment, need to take your wife out, your girl, whatever it is, I'm going to disappoint you. If your goal is to make money year after year, nobody else has been able to do it as much as I have and documented it. I don't think in this industry, going back to 2015, that many documented winning years. And again, it's not a brag. It's just so we make sure our goals are aligned. Because if our goals are not aligned, I'm going to disappoint you. Just like I disappointed anyone that's bought in the last two weeks. Because if, if that was your only goal, then Again, I can't be blamed. I told you, my goal is December 31st to be up money so that I have to pay taxes for income earned in 2024, profit earned for gambling. That's the goal. Winning the last two weeks isn't going to make that goal reality. Winning over the course of the year is going to make that goal reality. So if our goals aligned, you will be profitable long term just like I am since 2015, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23. 
Yes, I mentioned every single year because that's a long fucking time to have documented results. And I'm very proud of that. And that's why I want to make sure anyone in this room is here for the right reasons so you could do damage and we can make money. And the only way you're going to do that is if you follow the blueprint that has already been laid out to you. And that means manage risk correctly. So as we look towards this year, here's where we stand. Year to date, minus 16.62 units, 16.62 units. We'll just bump it up. We'll make it 17. Usually we tip the waitress, but here we're down. So we're going to even make it 17. Now remember, we bet 0 0.25, 0 0.50, 0 0.75, 1%, 1.25% 1 of bankroll. Why? Because we want our risk of ruin to be as low as possible. That's correct. There's two pieces of a puzzle. One's bet size, one's bankroll. Bet size, you cannot bet percentage, more or less bet size, we do never adjust. This stays the same, always. This is bankroll. This is what changes. This goes up, this goes down. This will never change. This will always be 0 0.25, 0 0.50, 0 0.75, 1%, 1.25 of this. Now, if 1% of this isn't balling enough for you, then you need to build this. That means you need to make more income, get a hot side, do whatever you got to do to build this. Because if you increase this, you're going to lose your money. You're going to increase your risk of ruin, which guarantees you will be in the 99.5% that has losing lifetime earnings betting sports. If you want to be in that 0.5% that actually has positive lifetime earnings, then you can never change this. You can only adjust this. And again, this will go up, this will go down, this will go up, this will go down. We're fine with that as long as we stick to this. So what does that mean? We have, a, let's say, hypothetical $10,000 bankroll. So 0.25 of 10,000 is what? $25, 0 0.50, 0 0.75, 75, 1% is $100, 1.25 is 125. We'll never bet more than $125 with a $10,000 roll. Yeah, let me say that again. With a $10,000 roll, you should never bet more than $125. Maybe $150 if you have a ton of conviction and some experience. But if you're betting 3%, 4%, 5%, meaning if you have a $10,000 bankroll and you're betting 50 a unit, you're going broke. 100 a unit, you're definitely going broke. That is a guarantee. Nothing's saving you. Just a matter of time. Like, are you going to go up first and then lose it all? Or are you just going to lose it all? But the end result's the same. Like, the, the conclusion's been predetermined because the math doesn't change. Like, again, this is an opinion. I'll always tell you when it's my opinion, and I'll tell you when it's fact. This is factual because the math dictates it. It has nothing to do with how I think of sports betting or profiting. It's simply, if you're betting 10% of your bankroll, unless you're hitting 99% of your bets, you're going to lose your money. Like, again, I'm just picking an arbitrary number. But what I'm saying is it's impossible. Yes, I'll use the word impossible. So at $25 a unit, 17 units, 17 times 25 is 425. So out of our 10 grand, we're down $400, 425. That's it. That's it. 400 bucks. If you're up, if you're down two dimes, then you're doing it wrong. If you're down 4,000, you really need to re, re, take a step back, rethink your thesis. I think you're going to draw, come to the conclusion that your thesis is off and you need to rethink your thesis and how you're going to approach this. If you're down around a dime, 500, that's fine. A little juice here, you piss the play here, that's fine. That's workable. And, and this has been the absolute, like of at least of 2024, most negative run and it hasn't been getting crushed it's just been losing juice losing juice losing juice losing juice and a couple plays here or there um again in the small sample size there's always going to be randomness of luck and sometimes you're going to be the product of good luck sometimes you're going to be the product of bad luck in the long term 
luck will not affect our results. And that's exactly what we want. We don't depend on luck. We just follow the math. We trust the math. So again, you want $100 off this month, Steam 100. You want 25% off longer, even the month, Steam 25. And we got March Madness. We got baseball. Remember who finished number one in profit in baseball last year? We still got all of football, all those other sports. Between now and December 31st, I am very confident. I make us a, 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 a huge favorite that we will end the year up and uh, make this another successful year. I believe it'll be nine out of the last 10 years. Again, that's even more than I expected. You probably don't expect to be that, um, you know, over a decade, you should have three, four losing years, you think. But uh, we've navigated this waters pretty well. I'm just looking to see if stuff's coming in. Give me a break. All right. My man, Nathan, that's it. Good time. Good time, brother. It's a good time. That's exactly what I've done. And I've, uh, again, I, the timing couldn't have been worse for this run and for me to be losing. Like the last two weeks, I've had having, having to pay books, but you can't time this shit. And you also, I like what Will's saying. He doesn't bet everything. Like if he doesn't agree with something or he doesn't like how a sport is running, he'll sit back and, and wait. You don't, that's the best advice. That's great advice. Will, thank you for sharing that because I try to stress that as much as possible because I, that's exactly what I do with the groups I work with. I get a bunch of plays. I bet 10, 15, 20, 25, 30 plays a day on Saturdays, college basketball not even talking first half props all that crazy shit just sides and totals i'll have 35 40 bets now, i can't give you 35 40 bets number one you won't get the number on all 35 or 40. number two that's too much volume for most bankrolls to withhold and withstand excuse me so uh, what do i do i narrow down the ones that i think are strongest still have ev left in them and so far so good that's proved to be the best method and you can do the exact same thing with the stuff I send. Narrow down the one you like the most. Don't kill yourself and kick yourself for the times you, you passed and it won. Because over the long run, it should balance out. Like never regret passing on a play just because of the result. Try not to be as result oriented because short-term results will confuse you, will mislead you. Focus on the process, results take care of themselves. The process is what matters more than anything. The results are gonna come down the road, way down the road. It's like, again, we keep talking about rewards, rewards, rewards. Nothing comes overnight, nothing comes easy. We, what do we equate it to? It's being in shape. This is the, the most obese this country's ever been at a time that people are the most educated about health, about nutrition, it's at everyone's fingertips. You, you be the, the poorest person in America and you're gonna have a cell phone. Like the government will give it to you if you don't have one and shit. So what I'm saying is everyone has that information at their fingertips right now. And yet we are the most unhealthy and obese we've been. Why? Because putting it into action and practicing is a lot more difficult than talking about it and knowing it. And I take it back to sports betting for profit. You could say all the right things. You could learn all the, all the words and sound sharp, but the only way you're actually doing being that is when the dust settles and what the results show. Numbers don't lie. You don't have to like my voice. You don't have to like how I look how i promote anything but the plays speak for themselves year after year year after year year after year and again this isn't an infomercial it's just so we're on the same page that we will have losing days 
losing weeks, losing months. That's part of the process and the road to being a profitable gambler. But if you don't learn how to lose, you could never win. Like if you think you got to be even at the end of the week and you can't just end the week down and pay your guy, you're never going to get over, like ahead to where you're profitable. If you treat it like a business, it pays like a business. Treat it like entertainment, it's gonna cost you like entertainment. Listen, you like shooting pool, it's gonna cost you money. You like going to strip club, it's gonna cost you money. You like hanging out at bars with your friends and drinking, it's gonna cost you money. You like gambling for entertainment, it's gonna cost you money. Sure, you may hit a, a score here, a score there, but long term, it's gonna cost you money. And if, if that's how you're gonna approach it, there's nothing wrong with that. Bet for fun, enjoy the games. Don't bet more than you could afford to lose and have a happy life. But if you're actually putting your hard-earned money at risk and your goal is to make money doing it, then you need to approach it as an investor and not as a fan. Put the pennants down, push the Marsh Magnus bracket out of the way. Who gives a fuck who cuts down the net a few Mondays from now, unless we have a future on it. And let's see between now and then how many mistakes the market could force on the odds makers so that we find those inefficiencies. And the reason they're going to force those inefficiencies is because this is that time of the year in college basketball where the market's saturated with the most unsophisticated bettors of all time. Just go down to the strip this Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Walk into the sports book. That's the market that's been drinking since eight in the morning all the way to nine at night, betting every game, every total, every halftime, that's the market. That's why we're able to go in and extract our profit from their inefficiencies. But if, if you're all about part doing that, then just do that. There's nothing, again, there's nothing wrong with those guys that are doing that. In fact, I envy them more times than not they're having fun they're enjoying the shit it's stressful for me it's business for me like i don't even watch the games because it's business it's not even fun like yeah like i told you mma fighting is the only sport i watch anymore we go it's become a business but if this isn't a business for you you're not going to make money betting sports i'm just again i don't mean to discourage anyone but I can't say this enough because there's it's it's gotten bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. Every commercial is sports betting, sports betting, sports betting. Every league is now being sponsored by a, a offshore casino. When just a decade ago they were telling us don't gamble, don't gamble, don't gamble. So this is just more and more young people. They're not waiting till they're 18. Younger and younger people are now gambling money that they have no chance of beating these books, zero, none. They don't even know what kind of juice to look for, what kind of big they should be betting into. They don't even know why a line moves yet. And again, as long as they stay as betters that are doing it for entertainment, they'll be okay. But that's not what I'm seeing. I'm just seeing delusional young people that think they have a shot against these big ass corporations out here. Good luck with that. Again, unless you have an army behind you, and fortunately we do, that's why we get this information. It's a very, very, very hard endeavor to take on. Like, I would, I would urge people to do a, so many different things to make money than become a gambler or a, a professional sports bet. Like, if I had a son and my son wanted to do what I did, there'd be no chance that was going to happen. Like, I would not urge him to take on this, this career path. It's very difficult. It's very difficult. It's one of the few that you could work 30 days out of 30 in a month, 72 to 80 hours a week, and lose money for doing it. And if you can't sleep comfortably, doing something like that you got to be pretty a little bit fucked up in the head to, to be able to live like that like it's just most people can't again you're going to work a whole month put in 80 hours 
a week, 360 hours at the end of the month, and you're going to have lost money doing it. You got to be built for that shit. Not everybody's built for that. But if you are, the, the profit and opportunity is endless. You could print money once you learn how. You wake up, you look at the betting board, and you print money. Again, it's not every day, it's not even every week, but year after year, we're printing money. The results show that. My Every year of my betting since 2015 is documented. We could pull up any date since 2015, and I could tell you whether I won or lost on that day and what games I bet and what the betting line was. Because transparency with me was has always been number one. Number one. Because some people are good talkers. Anybody could talk, could learn to talk, learn to sell, learn, learn to convince people, hit some emotional buttons. But the one thing that doesn't lie, can't bullshit, and doesn't it speaks the same language no matter where you're from, is math. Whether you're in Asia, Africa, North America, South America, numbers don't lie. They're all the same. You're either positive or you're negative at the end of the year. I don't want to hear no song and dance. Save that shit. Are you up money or are you down money? And 99.5 out of 100 that are in the sports book right now, as we're doing this, are down money. Fortunately, we're not. So let's keep going forward. We got some games to bet. It's 10 minutes till 7 o'clock game. Slow down, Pete. Don't worry. We're good. I'm already ahead of you. There's nothing yet on those four clockers. We are good so far. Next stop will be a uh, six o'clock game, six o'clock games. So it looks like we are uh, pretty good for now. Let me just look through and see if anything else came in. Oh. All right. You see if there's any question, then I'll let you know who I think national champ's going to be and all that beautiful stuff. Oh, wait, hold on. We got a, we got a late play. Oh, you may get a bonus for being here in the chat. I may not, excuse me, be able to send this out. BMC just sent out. Are you ready? Game 682, 682, Ohio State. 682, Ohio State. Minus the 11, Ohio State minus the 11. I bet that is a 3% play. I cannot put it at four subscribers because it starts in 10 minutes. It just came in as of right now. It's coming in actually. Don't be surprised if you see uh, 11 and a half in some places. By the hook, if it's 11 and a half, 11 is one of those numbers like 10. But you should be getting 11, no problem. So yeah, that was it, Ohio State, Ohio State. Yeah, and, and I'm hoping we don't get a lot of those last minute ones with uh, March Madness. Because, uh, you know, that's what happens. The public knocks a lot of these lines out of whack and then, you know, we go in and sweep up the, the mess. You know the job. All right. And there are two, uh, I'm doing two UFC, the UFC tomorrow is the podcast and two UFC shows on Thursday, which means I will be at the UFC Apex on Thursday during the uh, afternoon taping for UFC on the line. So if you don't see me out like tweeting stuff for March Madness, where I'm still working. The games are all still coming in. I have someone there to confirm and send out. And then, you know, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, everything goes back to normal. Um, but just know we're, we're ready for March Madness. I've already looked through all the matchups. I have all my leans circled because, you know, that's how I do it. I go through all the sides. I go through all the totals. 
I circle the ones I like, and then when they come in, I'm able to quickly assess whether I want to fire or not. All right. Let's see what's up. Oh, no. All right, let me see questions, 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 questions. Apex, yeah, I'm 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 trying. Actually, here's you want to hear funny real quickly. I I want to go to uh the, the apex to watch the fights. Yeah, exactly what Will's saying. That's the best place to watch them. I mean, I love going to the arena because it's 20,000 people going nuts, people are all dressed up, it's fight night in Vegas. You know what I mean? The celebs are out. It's a nice time. But as far as like Apex is just, you can't even get tickets there. Like it's a private show with for only like 200 people, 300 people compared to 20,000. So it, it's, a, it's a good time. And it's just a different experience. So it isn't that wild, that energy, but just have, it's having that experience. Like I've been to concerts that have been awesome. Like been the rock concerts, hip hop concerts, the every kind of con. I've been in so many different crazy concerts that you wouldn't expect. Like, and like having gone to like a Metallica concert was amazing, but then going to Cosmo had like uh, when they first opened the very first day in 2010, it was around New Year's that they opened. They had a special New Year's like for the real VIP VIPs, and I just happened to be working with that group back then that was card counting. And we had that Indian dude that um, had a real high credit limit. So we were able to get uh, wristbands for that performance. And it was like Jay-Z and Coldplay in a room for maybe 200 people, like a, a, just a, a, like where they would have like a, a wedding, a hall afterwards, like that small of a place. And it was absolutely amazing. But again, it isn't that, like electricity of having all those people going nuts, which is fun, but it's just the exclusivity of it that makes it like a great experience. So again, you guys get me going off these rants asking about Apex. Um, I've gone before, I've gone a couple of times, gotten the, the approval. Anyway, I, I wanted to go um, during this, the, the March Madness and sent in last week and got an approval. But I wanted it for this one, not like, cause last week started at one in the afternoon, Vegas time. And uh, I didn't love the card, but this one with Hebas and Namajunas and uh, a decent card. And I actually turned down the last approval and asked if there's any way they could push it to this one. I, I'm hoping I didn't just piss everybody off there. Like, cause it is so hard to get that ticket. And then I got it and I'm like, nah, you know what? You could have it, give me the next one. So I'm hoping they're not like, tell, hey, tell him to go fuck himself and he could watch it on TV like everybody else. Um, yeah, exactly. I, I cut my left nut to attend the Apex show. Yeah, it, that, it's true, Chris. I, it's true. Thank you. It's true. Everybody says that, please. They, all my friends are like, dude, just get me, if I could come with you to Apex, take me, please. Like I, I got a buddy from Philly that's out here, really, really sharp sports better. And he's like, dude, that's the only thing. I We buy dinners, you, we treat each other this and that. He's like, you always tell me, am I okay? Do I need anything? And I tell him, yeah, I need you to take me to Apex. And so far, nothing. Yeah, it's just, it's just a hard ticket, man. Because everybody wants it and it's, they don't have enough of it. So you gotta remember, it's all the fighters fighting that night, their families get tickets. Their team gets tickets, a couple of them, you know? And then you got all the UFC people that are high up. And then you have all Dana White's connected friends that are high up that want. And then everybody else, you know, wants tickets too, that thinks they know someone that knows someone that knows someone. So they're getting like nothing but requests, 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 requests. For those tickets like they told me some names that they've had to turn down so that's why i wouldn't i don't never take it personally like if they say 
No, but I, I've gotten lucky so far. I've only asked um, twice before this. And they gave them to me. Maybe that's why I've been with the company six years and I've only asked two times and I that's, do so much shows with them. Uh, that might be it. Maybe I, I, I didn't uh, overuse my allowance. So uh, Oh yeah, that's where you're going to be. Caesars, MGM, Circa. You're covered pretty much the entire Las Vegas strip as far as uh betting goes all gone sorry i just got this for a guest for tomorrow for our podcast i got green light it okay absolutely i'll be you know me if it's uh march madness i'll be up and around on the strip throughout throughout from now till april 8th it ends usually that's when i take my vacation right after um march madness i would always take a vacation go to no you know i've gone to new orleans bahamas all over always somewhere where there's a casino but um yeah this year probably not going to do it probably not going to do it it looks like uh no nah. All right, let's go to these later games and then let's talk some March Madness. Let me go over these later games with you guys and see if we got anything. You got the Ohio State. Let me look. We got UCF, UFC. Minnesota, nothing. Give me a sec. Providence over. That's going off right now. I don't like it. I don't like it. They're hitting it now. You'll see. That's why you'll see Caesars up to 42. There's 41 and a halves out there, but you know, it's quite online still at 41. I didn't mess with it. That's why I didn't use it. Again, it's going off as we speak. But it moved around, it danced a little too much for me, meaning it opened 140 and a half, went to 41, came to 39, 38 and a half, 39 and a half, 41, back to 40 and a half. Just too much, too much. Too much inconsistency there. I like consistency. Yeah. I No providence down. No, glad. Okay, we're gonna have one more play. One more play. You ready? I'm gonna give you a four percent play right now. Game 688, 688, Iowa, Iowa. Why is my Iowa not coming up? Hold on. All right, hold on. Log me out. We're going to buy here, so give me a sec. There we go. Iowa, game 688, 688. Iowa, we're going to take it to minus five. We're going to buy the half point. We can go up to 122. You won't have to. You only have to lay minus 120. That's how we roll. 688, 688. Iowa, lay minus five, minus 120. 
4% play. That means we lay 1%. Why? 0.25, 0.50, 0.75, 1%, 1.25. I don't repeat myself because I like my own voice. I do it so we remember. It got to become automatic, right? Same reason you practice the same kick punch as a fighter 8,000 times, not because you're stupid. It's so you don't have to think. You simply react. And you want to react right. I mean, you bet size right. You buy points the right times. You don't chase. All right, we got four premium plays today already. Boom, college basketball. Here comes the madness. Let's get this going. All right, I was out. <laughs> All right, that's going to do it for them. Uh, so we got premium card so far. Here we go. We got 679 over 143 and a half Virginia Tech Richmond. 686 over 143 South Florida, Central Florida. 670 under 128 Wagner Howard. Those all three were 3% plays and one 4% play Iowa minus five minus 120. And also I bet Ohio State minus 11, Ohio State minus 11. But that is not a premium play because it was uh, only nine minutes before tip and we have that 10 minute um, cutoff. All right, so now let's talk a little March Madness and get this out of the way because uh, I don't spend much time on this at all. I'm just being honest with you. I don't want to disappoint anyone. There's a million March Madness preview shows out there. Everybody's breaking down March Madness over and over and over again. There's even talking about betting lines March Madness. So if you really want like that kind of detailed analysis, I'm not the one. I'm not the one. I'm just bet the stuff with groups that are looking for these inefficiencies in these lines during this tournament and trying to place as many wagers and profit as much as possible when all the dust settles that's what i'm so excited about it um so i don't want to ruin that for anybody don't take what the reason i'm explaining it is so i don't want you to take my opinion take your opinion don't let me uh make you bet a particular way. Um, with that said, we may have um, regionals. That's the only thing we may bet is, is regionals, like a team to win the regional, make the final four, and one national champion. That's about it, if, if we do that. And I'm going to let you know already, we're not looking for any any long shot. The, the five teams that I'm pretty much looking at are Connecticut, Houston, Purdue, Arizona. And then it's that fifth team that I have to narrow down. Is it going to be Auburn? Is it going to be Iowa State? North Carolina? Creighton? Tennessee, there's a handful of teams that 
that are within a point, point and a half of each other. So for me, I'm going to tell you who I'm betting. We're, I'm going to do it right now. We're going to bet our future to win the bracket. We're getting plus money right now. Let me see. I'll just get this over with now. You know what? I was going to wait and tease this shit. But we don't play like that. So let's get this shit over with so we could then move on to what matters. Where's the... I need tournament odds. I need tournament odds. Hold on. Let me get some tournament odds. All right, to win the championship. Here we go. Here we go. There's something wrong here. Let me just check it. Let me see what FanDuel has. Okay. You ready? Here we go. I'm going to make two bets for you. Two bets for you. Let me get Johnny ready to release these futures too. Actually, I'll put it up on Slack. That's it. I'm bet I'm following I'm one team. That's it. That's it. There it comes. Give me a sec. Here goes number one. To win the South. Are we ready? To win the South Regional. NCAA. Tournament. South Regional. We're going to bet Houston. Houston plus 130. Houston plus 130. I'm seeing 140s as well, but I'll do it at 130. Houston plus 130. We're going 5% play. That's a 5% play on Houston to make the final four. Yes, I like them that much. No no playing games. Like I said, we're just going to narrow down the one couple big bets and then we're going to bet to uh, game by game, day by day. Now to win 2024 NCAA tournament. Houston, once again, yep. We are going to jump on Houston Cougars, baby. Hakeem Olajuwon. I'm seeing plus 600, plus 625, plus 525, plus 550. Let's go six, 628. What? Let's go six to one. You can get six to one. You guys can get six to one. I, I like Auburn too, but I narrow it down to one. You guys can bet who you like. Again, I bet my one team. I bet my one team, and I'm going with Houston. I like the 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 defenses they played, and I think their offense is better than number 17 because they played top 10 defenses, and they got a number two defense against some pretty good offenses. Give me Houston loaded on both sides of the ball. I love that. They're not a tall team, so they might you know, struggle a little against those really tall teams. 
but they've had such a strong, tough strength of schedule. And it's a team that's been together for a while. Some good D1 experience, top 100, which matters because especially when these big um, programs, these guys don't stay long. One year and they're out. They want to go to the NBA. So when you have a team that's got a couple seniors, a few juniors, that's a good sign. That's a good sign. And here with Sheed, Cryer, Sharp, Dunn, Roberts, four of those five are seniors. Throw in Fran Javier Francis as a junior, this team's loaded. This team's loaded. So give me Houston, 5% play to uh, win the South. That means make the Final Four. And then Houston, plus 600 for, uh, what's it called? Uh, for 2.5. 2.5%. There we go. Boom, boom. Jackpot. We're gold. There you go. If you got any questions for futures, fire now. So we could wrap this up soon because it's time for me to dig into more Thursday games, Friday games, so we could do some damage. Already, I didn't think we were going to have five bets yet. And here, what do you know? There we go. So I just got to send these out. All right, March Madness futures are out, baby. Boom. Let's do it. 5% play. Here we go. Love you more. yeah last last year some that about baseball yeah I, I believe i won um a hundred and something units yeah finished number one this is last year is when we did the most damage from here on if you guys remember from march 18th of last year and it's march 19th this year till the end we won 160 units that, this is when it, I mean, again, I'm glad this time last year we were behind, I think. So this is the perfect timing um, that we're just floating on juice. I'm excited about what's going. This could be a, a huge, huge um, year if we could just repeat last seat year. Shit. All right, let me see some. Uh, March Madness. Mm -hmm. 
Let me pull up some March Madness stuff for you guys. The, all right, for, for long shots, people are asking who I would bet. I'll tell you now. I would look at definitely Arizona. I like Arizona. And I, I like Tennessee. Those number two teams, that could very easily be number ones. Those are the two teams I like, Arizona and Tennessee. Like I would put a percent to, but I don't want to, again, I don't want to fire bullets on a bunch of futures when we know futures have the highest hold. So they're very hard markets to beat. I want some exposure, but I don't want a ton of exposure. Like if you want to increase your exposure, have at it. Personally, I would take between Arizona and Tennessee, I think Arizona has the better players. I think Tennessee's got the better team. Like they play better defense. I just don't, I just don't think I, yeah, I would go Arizona, Arizona. If I have to pick it's Arizona, that's it. Uh, Houston to win the NCAA, three per, uh, two and a half, two and a half, two and a half. Just so it wins 15. You could go three. I might have went three. I just did it to win 15 instead of 18. If they send it out as three, I'm, I'm completely comfortable with it as a 3% play. I'm very comfortable with it. So, because again, they should be, if they're, it, it's almost never, not ne almost never do you see two number ones playing each other. So if 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 Houston gets to the NCAA championship game, the head should be out easily available. Like they should be favored over anybody except UConn. So if if they if Houston makes the championship game, we should be able to earn off that very easily, very easily. Um, Right now, wow, you could get Ohio State live, minus five and a half. That's nothing, free money. That's just winning the game by a half a point? When they're up, they're down six, minus five. Oh, they could even lose the game by, oh, uh, yeah, well, they got to win the game for you to catch the bet. I like it. I like it. I like it. For the, the, the gentleman that asked, yes, I do like Ohio State live, minus five and a half, down now they're they're down eight points. I like it. I like it. I like it. Now basketball is a game of runs. A game of runs. Why would you watch a whole NBA game unless you're a huge fan? When you know in the last five minutes, all hell breaks loose. All hell breaks loose. Um. So we got UFC this weekend. We got college basketball this weekend, and we'll be looking at NBA and every other sport as well. We got five premium plays so far for tonight in college basketball. We've already got two futures for the big dance. That's Houston to get to the Sweet 16 for 5%. Houston to win the national championship for 2.5%. Boom. We got good action. Again, I didn't want to drag it out. There's a billion preview shows I'm sure everybody has watched already about uh march madness matchups and who's going to win it all and you know they're fun that's cool that's awesome but um again i just i just i don't i don't really have the time to do all that and for the the brackets i i don't like it to affect me then throughout like let's say we get to the elite eight and i have particular teams still alive and on that matchup, I don't like them. I just, I just avoid that shit. 
So I, I used to just play the bracket, fill it out once, throw it under in the desk, and then pull it out in the final four and see how I've done. But um, now nah, I don't even waste that time. It's just, I'll, I'll look at the bracket, I'll see the matchups, see who I think has the easier path as far as the big favorites, which one's for real, and get it done. I know we all want to see Cinderella, and she sometimes makes an appearance in March Madness. We're going to keep hearing about Cinderella, Cinderella, who's this year Cinderella? But does Cinderella ever cut down the nets? Usually not. She gets to go to the dance. She shows up even sometimes in the Elite Eight. Cinderella even makes the Final Four at times, but she doesn't cut down the nets. So I don't look for Cinderella to cut down the nets. You could, you could earn off Cinderella, but that's about it. So I've been avoiding the Cinderella uh, situations with futures. I used to. I, I did that in the past. You know, it's fun to find that that George Mason. I get it. Just takes too time, too much time, and just not enough uh, opportunity and profit in it. But those those you know the the, the top tier teams, even though unlike team sports that play series where you have time for the cream to rise to the top in a tournament, randomness should come into play, and it does. That's why Cinderella gets to the Elite Eight, the Final Four. Like if they play three, five, seven game series, there's no way those teams would ever make it that far. But because it's only one game, it's so much randomness involved. That's why we never get too high or too low of results. Because just like a, a team that's not elite will make this year's elite eight, it's just because of the randomness of single games. If they were playing those five game series, that Cinderella would not be there. And again, don't forget Steam 100, 100 bucks off, Steam 25, 25% off. You don't even have to push. Like it's it's college basketball, March Madness time. Baseball is just around the corner, starting in a couple of weeks. And I've never been more ready and in a better uh, position to do some damage, mindset and all, and all. Things are good. Thank you, Ernesto. You're the man, brother. You're the man. Thank you, sir. The podcast is uh, The Gambler's Perspective. It's on UFC Fight Pass every week. I, oh, if you, whoever's been following that's done damage. I, I've, 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 I've broke even one week, and I think out of like nine, ten weeks, I, I, the plays I've given is every single week I think I've won. Um, not Again, there's randomness involved in that. But the way we do it is we don't force – like uh, I do UFC on the line, the, the show for UFC on Fight Pass, there we get a $1,000 bankroll. So I could do volume, I could bet, different stuff. But for the uh, UFC, the Gambler's Perspective podcast, we only narrow down top prop, top dog, top favorite. And you could say pass. Like, you don't have to bet it. Like, last week, I just had one bet. That was it. It was the main event. I bet to Bora, the dog. He was plus 101 at that time. And that was it. A no favorite, no dog, no uh, uh, prop. So that's what I really like there, challenging you to, because the goal is to be plus EV and prove it's plus EV. And so far we've done 73, 74 episodes and uh, we're both positive EV, me and Nick Kalikas, just like in UFC on the line where it's our sixth season. And there I've won uh, four out of five seasons and this being the sixth, I'm up. So Really good, really good. This one came out of the gate on fire. I wish it ended this. <laughs> I wish it ended next week. Then it would be, you know, five of the last six years. So, you know, a little ego, little ego bump there. Yeah, we're all human. But uh, again, any last questions? Want to wish you guys the best throughout the madness. Don't get too crazy. Again, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. The best opportunities are going to come, believe it or not, the second week. Once you get to the Sweet 16, Elite Eight, Final Four, because everyone's concentrating on just a, a number of games, just a few games. So that's where you get the lopsided action. Here, where there's four or five going off at the same time, it's a little more spread out. So the, 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 the opportunity for inefficiencies due to public one-sided action lessen. But we also have more options. So it kind of balances out. But what I'm trying to get to is don't get overexcited. Do not 
try to like, I'm, you know, like, like the first week of NFL, right? You're so excited the season started. You bet more than you should. You have more action in, more parlays. You're betting the late stuff, even though you hadn't looked, bet, wanted to bet the late stuff earlier. That's what I'm saying. Like if you, if you, if it's, if you break down the whole day and you look at the night, six o'clock games and you don't love anything, but then because you lost in the morning and it's four o'clock and you're looking at six o'clock games and now all of a sudden you like something, you may re revisit that thesis. You may be looking for action now. That's what you want to avoid during March Madness. That's where betters I see make their biggest mistakes, where they're chasing, they're chasing, they're chasing, and uh, that's how you get into the big hole. Most holes could have been dug, covered a long time before they got dug so deep. So I always urge betters, if you lost early, that's okay. Cover up that hole, unless you love something. No reason to keep digging it because it's only going to get deeper. So uh, with that out of the way, we know what we got. Five premiums, two futures. Shit's coming out tomorrow. Thursday, we're popping. Friday, the same. Saturday, Sunday, I'll be out and about. Make sure you stop by, say hello. Don't be shy. And uh, UFC action will be coming as well. We'll look to stay hot there for sure. And I can tell you right now, we will be on the underdog in the main event. We will be on the underdog. I'm giving it to you guys everything. You guys, I, I just can't. Yeah, you guys show so much love in the comments. What am I going to do? Just give me a, we're going to bet he boss. The only reason I haven't sent it out yet is because we're going to, Wise guys, schmines guys. We're going to fade that, that steam. We're going to fade that steam on Namajunas. And uh, you'll see a video from our show on why. On why I absolutely love Hebas. Even if she loses the fight, it's a great bet. She's a great bet at this price. And uh, that's all we could hope for. Plus 200, uh, like stealing, like stealing. So uh, we'll see where that line settles. And uh, we'll definitely have some more action. It's not a premium yet, but just letting you guys know, I am, I will be on the dog in the main event. With that said, you guys have a great day. Thank you for all the love. You guys are amazing. Best of luck. Do damage. Stick to the game plan. Stick to the blueprint. Numbers don't lie. That's the bottom line. Just follow the blueprint. Your results will reflect exactly what mine have done. And that's the bottom line, guys. Have the best day. You could meet me anytime, Chris. It would be a pleasure to meet you one day too, sir. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, hope to meet all you guys eventually. You guys, especially they do those meet and greets. Tell Johnny to do those meet and greets again. He hasn't done one of those in like a few years. So it's been a while. Thanks again. Enjoy the time with your families this weekend. Stay safe. God bless. I'll see you guys next week.